So what's up, everybody? It's uh, it's Mike and Derek. Is it? I believe it's Derek D. Thank you. But uh, <laughs> oh my god, it's got to be the D. <laughs> it's always the D. Come on, uh, you know. Yes, yeah, with the D, D too, Dennis. man. Doesn't Would you it? tell I mean, Mike? Ah, I think I think we need to do a little bit of a, a little pregame before this episode. Yeah, we're doing a little pregame. Let you guys know what's about to happen on this episode. Uh, we have a amazing guest on. I mean, this is probably one of my my all time favorite. We've already recorded this podcast, so I'm talking in that past tense. Yes, it's one of my all time favorite guests that we've ever had on. Nice. Talk about insightful. Uh, Robbie Ashadri from Undisclosed Podcast. Mm-hmm. You might be aware of this little podcast out there called Serial. Huge, huge. So if you podcast. don't podcast, I'm sorry. Was that is Donald Trump here? Let me tell you something, Mike. <laughs> it's huge. I mean, if this podcast was a wall, it'd be gold. It'd be platinum, huge, fantastical. <laughs> <laughs> so if you know about those two podcasts, then you know who Robbie is, and uh, she really gave us a, a, a lot of her time, and it was great for her to talk. And we she wanted- enunciates like her voice is great. Oh, her voice is just like butter. It, it, you can listen to it all day. I kind of want to play it back right now. <laughs> so you're going to hear this episode. It's a little bit of a departure from a normal PBR. We were really kind of pressed into time, a time frame. Yeah. Uh, so, and we really wanted to find out what she thought about this case. So, um, you know, check out this episode. And if you haven't listened to Serial or Undisclosed yet, you can get the links off of our site to their sites. And you got to listen. They're amazing podcasts. Yeah, but let me tell you guys something real quick. I have not listened to Serial. I've been meaning to. Mike has. And he's listened to Undisclosed. And I was generally, as I was talking to Robbie, just asking questions, generally like interested. And even even if you don't listen to Serial before this, listen to our, listen to this podcast coming up right now, and I guarantee you're going to want to go back and listen to Serial. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was just asking questions. It's just it's it's really interesting. It's it's unfathomable that some of these things happen. People get convicted for things that they're completely innocent. Yeah, for. man. And I, I you mean, know, I was just going to say like. You, our, our show is all about the revolution, and we usually talk about the revolution of our guests. Well, you know what, man? Everybody, this is this is a revolution of this is what it's all about. Like this can't go on. Yeah, it's it's crazy that 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 lawyers and prosecutors literally just want to win, no matter what. They don't care if they send a, a, a totally innocent person to jail for the rest of their life, death penalty. It doesn't matter. Mm-mm. They just want to win for brownie points and more money. It's insane. Not all of them, of course. There's good ones out there like Rabia. You know what I'm saying? I, I listen. I hear what you're saying. There's also a splash of Arnold in the episode, so don't worry. <laughs> about it. We, we had to drop some PBR comedy on it. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy the episode. A little bit of a departure, but truly one of the most fascinating episodes we've had. Thanks again, Rabia and uh, PBR Posse. Check it out. We hope you like it. Here it comes. Hi, my name is Rabia Chaudhary. I'm a co-producer and co-host of the podcast Undisclosed, and right now you are listening to the PBR podcast. Hey. What's up, everybody? PBR Podcast, Mike Plano, Derek D. We're back at the Speakeasy Studio, and we have a very special guest on Skype tonight. Yes, very special guest. This is a big deal. And she's coming all the way from Baltimore, Maryland, in a closet somewhere. Yeah, via Skype in a closet. <laughs> That's right. Robbie Ashaudry from the Undisclosed Podcast. What's up? Thank you so much for coming on. Yes. My pleasure. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. It's not often that we, we have someone on the podcast that's... Um, just so intelligent. Yeah, can I say something? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what you, I mean? yeah, you're, uh, Robbie, you're a lawyer, right? I am. Yeah, I'm a yeah, lawyer. Yes, yeah, so you you got that like lawyer perfect like diction down. Like the just just like your the way you pronounce words and stuff. It's almost perfect. You know, I've learned to enunciate better, especially with a podcast. To be honest, so. I object. I just want. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> irrelevant. <laughs> irrelevant. Strike. Yeah, yeah. Strike that from the record, please. Uh, Robbie, I'm a, I'm a big fan of yours. Um, I got turned on to you uh, via Serial, as I would imagine a lot of people do. But I got to tell you something right now. Yep. You, uh, I know you're a lawyer and all of these things, but your voice, you are, your voice is like butter. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, you have it. It's not even like her, her enunciation. Like, Robbie, I have a speech impediment. I'm tongue-tied. And 60% of everything I say is almost accurate. <laughs> right? I, don't, I don't hear the, the, the impediment, though, to be honest. Because so. I, I work really hard at enunciating all of my syllables. Uh, syllables, yeah. Syllables are tough. Um, you know, I've never liked my voice. I 
keep hearing this a lot in the last year. So it's kind of like a, almost a gift to me that suddenly people like my voice. It's not something I ever considered an asset, to be honest. So, but thanks, appreciate it. No, it, it's like it's comforting. It's you have a very war warm and smooth day. Like you think? Yeah, yeah, it's comforting, but it's very like astute, which is good. I think I, I think I sound a bit authoritative, and that's probably you know years of lawyering. But um, you know, like I'm I'm from a South Asian background, and I don't know if you guys know anything about South Asia, but Bollywood is a big industry in South Asia. Oh yeah, and uh, the the you know perfect female voice from in the Bollywood industry, very high pitched voice. So I've always been considered to have like too much of a masculine sound um, for the South Asian community. Like nobody was buying it, nobody was liking it. So. Yay that I'm broken out of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't agree with that at all. That is wrong. I, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean as far as far as like uh, radio voices go, did you did, did you did you know that you you possess like I think a lot of the success of your podcast is you, is your voice. Gosh, I don't think about no, I don't. I, I, I have to disagree. There. I mean, I think people, <laughs> people might like my voice, but you know, that podcast is, if I'm just sitting and talking, like I, I am like the Scooby-Doo of that podcast. I am really the third wheel. Colin and Susan are the brains. They bring the content. I mean, our recent episode on Christina Gutierrez, defense attorney, mm -hmm. um, that was weeks and weeks of research by Colin. He wrote up like 20 odd pages for the script. So um, I, I, I like to think of myself kind of as like the, I'm almost the audience as we're going along. So I'm kind of like, what do you mean by that? Well, what had really happened? But um, I don't know. I don't think people would just come back for the voice. <laughs> I could be <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're the quarterback. and You do a great job at it. So people that might be tuning in to PBR Posse, our, our listeners that might not know, uh, Rabia, it, we really kind of connected through what everybody in the podcast realm knows, the show Serial, which was a, uh, I guess you would chalk it up to be like a murder mystery kind of crime solving. True story. True story yep. uh, based on a, a, a gentleman named Adnan uh, that was accused of a murder and who's now been serving in, uh, a term in prison. He's been in jail for like 16 something years. Uh, and Rabia, after that amazingly successful podcast was finished, you piggybacked on that and you started Undisclosed. And for a couple of reasons. Number one, you're a lawyer, you're an attorney. But number two, you also have a very close connection to this case. Yeah, I mean, I've known Adnan since he was 13 years old. He's my little brother's um, like best friend from high school. And, wow. you know, he's like he's a, he's been like a little brother to me as well. So for me... Uh, it's a very personal case. I'm the one who took the case to Sarah Koenig, uh, who then created Serial, which was amazing and mind blowing and beyond anything anybody could have ever imagined. Um, but you know, as Serial was ongoing, I, I started blogging with every episode I would blog because there was always stuff I wanted to add. And then two other lawyers started blogging, Sarah, uh, I'm sorry, Susan Simpson and Colin Miller. And then I didn't know them, but at some point we're like, we need to we need to get a bigger audience for the content we're putting out, and that's how our podcast came about. That's pretty awesome. I mean, like, wait, so you you you've known him for all, like obviously your entire life. And uh, I, I I gotta be honest, I didn't listen to Serial, but I know the I know the story. I've been meaning to listen to it, and uh, it's just kind of fascinating. Like you hear all these, you know, it just sounds. There's so many things that are, seem so corrupt and everything involved with this story that it's like. Yeah, you know, just from what I've heard, it's like, man. You know, I, I imagine li I listen. To, I'm the opposite of Derek. I listened to it fanatically. Like I couldn't wait for that next episode to come out, and it was it captivated me. And the story right. was it was really like I viewed it as like an ebb and flow of guilt and innocence. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I think like Sarah and Serial kind of made it that way on purpose for because I mean they really attacked it from a from an entertainment standpoint, right? Sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think Sarah is a master storyteller, and if you're going to tell a story um, to keep people engaged and to keep them coming back, you have to constantly keep them in that suspense. And I think, uh, and I'm sure once uh, Derek starts listening to it, if he does, uh, he'll probably binge it. In the no, I, I know. I've, that's all I've heard. And I, and I feel bad that I have not. What was it like? Nine, it was nine or 10 episodes. 12 actually 12, 12 episodes at the end and yep. um yeah she was she's really good i mean but you know we for me like you know my agenda has always been different from her agenda i'm like an advocate i believe he's wrongfully convicted the story was amazing she brought it to the world but uh in terms of exonerating him we had to take it to another level and where is that at right now i mean I, you you firmly believe he's innocent right 
Absolutely. I would not be wasting years and years of my life on this if I sure. didn't. Absolutely. And wh- where is that like, at right now? Where is it all at? currently uh, it's going well see before serial launched and this is actually as sarah was doing her she spent about a year investigating the case before the podcast aired um his post-conviction appeal which is like the big appeal actually had been denied um at, during her investigation had been denied and for a lot of people that's kind of the end of the road we filed an appeal to that denial and usually like in 99 of the cases that appeal is denied i mean like it's pretty much the end but because of serial and because of everything that has been uncovered since serial the case came back to life. And so now it moved through the appeal. It was grant. The appeal was granted. Um, and then it went to this, like the highest court in Maryland. They bumped it back down to the lower court cause they want uh, the testimony of, um, a very important witness. We've been trying to get in front of the, a judge for 16 years, uh, included. So, you know, things are going very well for us. We really, anticipate, I mean, at this point, honestly, I feel like he could, I feel like he could be home in the next year. That'd be amazing. Uh, let's. <laughs> all right. There's so many. Th- there's so many things I want to talk about. Right. Like, re- if Derek, Derek, and I, um, we we have our uh, intern, Dennis the intern, who, you know, ba- basically he wanders around here and just causes havoc. Dennis and does nothing. I, I don't even know where he is right now. But if we, if he were murdered, right? Yes. And not not to make light of the situation, but this is <laughs> exactly. kind of a comedy podcast. But if he were murdered and I and and Derek admitted to burying Dennis's body, right, and blamed it on me. Uh-huh. Derek's going to jail, man. Like any any way you stretch stretch it out, Derek's going to jail, right? I, I, I would think so. <laughs> I mean, I would hope so. Well, I mean, is that not what Jay did? Jay ha- did. I mean, Jay did admit this over and over. I mean, the basis of his um, you know value to the state as a state's witness was that yeah, a non killed her. I didn't see him kill her, but I helped bury the body. But you know, um, I think. I'll be honest, at this point, I think the state knew that Jay was bullshitting. I think what really happened here was that the cops really believed Adnan did it. They couldn't figure out how or when he did it, but they just wanted to get their guy. And they railroaded Jay. Who, and the reason his story kept changing over and over was because he, was, he didn't have a story. He had to keep changing it because the cops were like, well, it's not working for us. It's not working for us because, no, now it's contradicting the cell phone record, all these things. You know, and, and the only way Jay was going to keep giving them what they wanted was because they are like, you're not going to spend a day in jail. We promise you that. And he didn't. And where is Jay now? Oh, Jay is married with kids in California. Oh, um, man. Yeah. So, you, do you know Jay? No, I don't. Um, my younger brother has like met him back in high school like at a party or something. But you know, a lot of the kids in the community knew him. I didn't know him. I I mean, these kids are a lot young. Adnan was, is a lot younger than me. I was like in law school when this happened. He was in high school, um, and Jay was part of that crowd, so I didn't know him. And you grew, you, you grew up in uh, Baltimore or in Maryland? I grew up in Maryland. We, my dad worked for the U.S. government. We grew up all over the country because he worked for the Department of Agriculture. Um, right. But then we finally kind of settled down when I was in middle school, high school, in, in, out in the boonies in Maryland. And then I went, to univers- I went to college in Baltimore, and then my whole family ended up in Baltimore. Oh, wow. I mean, I, I, just to get back, though, it's like so inter- – like a, a podcast came out yeah. called Serial about mm-hmm. this whole case. And then, boom, she said something that usually 99% of the time gets denied was what's – the, what's the word I'm looking for? Was uh, allowed. Overturned. I, <laughs> I, I, but the Granted. It was, it was granted. And the, the fact that is that because – The power this, of media. The power of media, the power of entertainment. Yeah. And uh, Yes, it is entertainment, but it's also a true story. And but, this is someone's life, and it there's, could be – there's an innocent man, as a lot of people think, sitting in jail, and it seems to happen. But the the worst so part many. about it, man, it, yeah, it's de- it does, Derek. It seems to happen a lot, and the, what this this podcast, and specifically undisclosed, has has brought to light is it's like exposed the government for the bullshit in which it's been doing. Like these cops and Robbie, please again, every sixty percent of what I say is bullshit. So correct me where <laughs> yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah. But Jump like the, these cops that that brought these charges against Adnan and put him in prison have since been essentially, I don't want to take, use the term convicted, but convicted, I'll, I'll say it, convicted of doing this to other people. Yeah, I mean, so hmm. what's happened in a number, a number of other cases, it's come out with the same detect, a couple of the same detectives that worked in Adnan's case, they've been, um, they, they've done some shady stuff in some other cases, specifically in one case, this guy who was exonerated after 17 years, um, Sabin Burgess, and he filed a a suit against the same detective saying these guys literally planted evidence. They bullied, oh. they bullied witnesses into making statements. No that, bullying. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean like cops can be shady at the same time. There are great cops out there, but the yeah. system, the system is stacked against the defendants. And I think what, that's what people have to understand is when just because somebody has been arrested, like just, you can't believe the hype. I mean, unless like it, there's some real serious 
physical proof. I mean, it's so easy to get screwed by the system. And and the prosecutors are right there with them. And it's also easy to get screwed by the media because uh, you're arrested for something. You could be completely innocent, but you're you're you're. You're, it's you're, done. you're already guilty. You're guilty. You're guilty by, uh, you know, by the masses, <laughs> but, you know, just because they've read the story and they're like, oh, he's the word without knowing details. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think this idea of uh, innocent until proven guilty is a legal fiction. It doesn't really exist. Hmm. All right, Robbie, uh, here's here's my contention. Okay. I'm accused of murder of my girlfriend or my ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I get put in prison. I'm screaming from the mountaintops that I did not do it. I mean, I'm pulling every family card and political connection I have, every media connection, and I'm going public saying, I, this, I did not do this. Right. Why did Adnan not do that, or did he? And, and we just don't know. Well, that, I mean, like, this is not, you know, that works great for a movie, but that's not real life, because... It, in real life, what happened and what happened here and happens often to people is that, uh, first of all, Adnan spent, he was 17 years old. His lawyers were not allowed to see him. Um, they pulled him out of his bed like at 5 a.m. and took him down to the station. After six or seven, seven hours of interrogation, they kept him in a room and he, all he kept saying was, I have nothing to do with this. Like, I'm, I am in it. That's all he kept saying to the detectives. And he really thought, he really thought he was just going to go home. Like, this is not really happening. Like, this, this is some kind of screw up. I'm going to go home. And, uh, you know, when he finally was a, allowed to make a couple of calls, he talked to his family. He talked to a friend. He was crying. He was a little bit hysterical because he didn't know what's happening. I mean, he's 17, right? Now, this is not a family, by the way. To this day, if you haven't noticed yet, his family is very private. They're very gun sh- Like, they're p- shy of the public and the media. That's why, like, I'm the one who's constantly in everybody's face, and they're not. Um, and they're really just very quiet people who just go about their lives. They don't have media connections. They don't have uh, political connections. The second thing is this. When you get a lawyer, you know what your lawyer says to you? That Your lawyer says to you, you don't say a effing thing to anybody. You don't talk to anybody. When Adnan got his attorney, Christina Gutierrez, and this is like a woman with, I don't know, three decades of criminal defense attorney. What she said to him not only was like, you're not allowed to talk to media, which... Lawyers never allow their clients to talk to media. Um, but also she said, do not respond to anybody who contacts you. So he was getting letters and stuff from like his friends from school. And he wouldn't write back because his lawyer's like, no, you're, you're not allowed to talk to anybody. He wanted to testify in his self-defense at the trial. And she said, absolutely not. You're not going to testify. So you at that point, like if you're in that situation, you're going to do what your very seasoned, really expensive lawyer is telling you to do. And did that, and but obviously that that didn't really work for him, right? I mean, it would have worked if she had done her job. If she you did know, it right, he had an alibi witness. She never called the alibi witness. She never even contacted this girl. So it wasn't a complicated case. And the funny thing is, she actually kept saying that to him and the family. There's no evidence here. There's no physical evidence. Like this, the you, the witness is a disaster. You're gonna like you're gonna you're gonna win. You know you're gonna be fine. He wasn't so sure because once he was. Um, arrested, he didn't get bail. So he had to wait in jail the whole time for the trial. And, you know, other inmates give you the the lowdown. They're like, other inmates were like, dude, once you are arrested and, you know, and you're denied bail, like it's, it's really hard to get off on a charge like this. And so he wasn't so sure, but his lawyer, she just didn't do her job. Wow. And he's now been in jail for how many years? It'll be almost 17 years. It'll be 17 years in February. Wow. D- d- double his life when he, when, when, he yep. when he went in. Yep. I mean, th- that is just absolutely crazy to me. Now, when, so say he gets out, right? What happened? Like, what is the, is it just, okay, sorry, our bad, you're free. Or is now, is there like a huge friggin' lawsuit? Like, you assholes, I'm coming after you guys for putting me away for this long. I was just proven innocent. I'm suing everyone and anything. Like, what, what happens? Does he, does the state give him money? Like, what happens? So, you know, this is something that should really piss people off because it really pisses me off. And that is this, that the state has no accountability. And in most cases like this, what happens is when the state is up against the wall, like, for example, let's say in the, you know, we're waiting for a ruling from the judge. We anticipate eventually, the you know, one of the courts in Maryland will say he, he's getting a new trial. You guys are idiots. He's getting a new trial. But the day he's offered a new trial, I can guarantee the state's going to say, nope, never mind. We don't want to retry him because they couldn't. If they did, they'd be destroyed at this point. We have destroyed their case. There's nothing there. Their own expert, their cell phone expert just gave us an affidavit like a few weeks ago saying, no, that's not how 
the science works. They totally misrepresented it. Wow. Um, so, you know, so what would happen is this, and this happens all the time. It happened in the West Memphis three cases. They would all probably offer Adnan an Alfred plea. And that is a plea deal that says time served, whatever you served is fine. We're going to let you go. Um, you get to maintain your innocence while admitting that the state has enough evidence that you might be found guilty in a court of law. It's a really weird, it's another, another one of those weird right, it's like It's like they're taking the blame off of them so you can't come at them with any right. legality. And most of the times with those pleas, um, it will have the condition that he cannot sue anybody. Okay, and the, 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 But the biggest tragedy of those pleas is, um, because it's basically the state covering their butts. It's saying, okay, oops, we made a mistake, we're not going to pay for it, and we're not going to reopen this investigation. So, they, so can't, they, they won't even go after the real killer, Jay? They won't. They won't do it. But you know, the thing is, like now, I feel like we have like this real incredible public push behind this case. And I think if they were going to try to do that and just keep the case closed, that they would really be screwed. I think that people are going to demand accountability for Hayes' death, and they should. A hundred percent. And I mean, man, that's just crazy to me. So wait, this I, I again, I have to listen. Yeah, man. But this guy Jay is that? Well, I want I wanted they, who, I wanted to ask Robbie. Okay, go uh, let Robbie. Uh, assuming well, I don't even know how to word this, but like, do you think Jay did it? <laughs> I don't know how to word this. No, I can tell you all these what? years, um, all these years through all the different appeals, I always thought it was Jay because, you know, I thought my, my, what? the rationale was like, listen, Jay describes in his statements what she looked like, what she was wearing. Yeah, yeah, but what? All things, how could she not do it? But what, now. What I beat myself up about was, uh, what, and I don't believe from listening to everything, both podcasts, that Adnan did it. I believe that he is innocent. And I always teeter towards Jay. I always think it's Jay. But I can't figure out for the life of me what Jay's motive would be. Yeah. You know, th th this is another thing that like, you, this is called the CSI effect. We always think that things happen like this on TV. There are lots, first of all, there's lots of murders and lots of uh, horrible things happen to people with no motive. There are random killings all the time. Um, sometimes people end up in the wrong place, wrong time. A fight gets out of control or something. But having said that, uh, I don't think it's Jay at all. I wow. think Jay but, was completely railroaded, and we know that because his lawyer at the time has now come forward, and she's speaking to our team, and she said that, listen, he was told, Jay was a 19-year-old black boy, um, she said he was told that if he did not basically take this deal, testify against Adnan, that he was going to be he was going to be charged with the murder, and he would be charged in the county. The Baltimore County is a white county. Baltimore City is a black city, right? Like, that's what the juries look like. So the prosecutor, white guy, says to him, if you don't do this, we're, I'm going to kick this to the county where it's going to be an all, ma all white jury and I'm going to charge you with um, first degree murder. And guess what? You're old enough for the death penalty. Um, and his own lawyer is telling us this is what happened. And so, you know. But if why, I, why yeah. admit to helping bury the body and make all, that, make all that up? Why even like connect yourself to the case at all? Because they, because they scared him. I mean, they told him that we think you, you know, if you don't do this, we're going to charge you with it. You yeah. had a gun's phone that day. You had his uh, car that day. And the problem is, you know, Jay comes from a family where, first of all, we're talking about Baltimore City in the 1990s, okay? It doesn't take a lot to lock up a, a, a young black male. It's the it's wire, like, right? I mean, it is. And the wire is not like crazy. It's really based on reality. Um, but also, you know, Jay's family has a lot of, a lot of interactions with the law. His father spent time in prison, his cousin, brother. I mean, like there's, you know, there's some drug dealing happening out of his grandma's house. Like he knows that if they wanted to, they probably could have done it and they probably could have found a way to frame him too, the way it, they would have done. It's so crazy to me that like police and prosecutors, whatever, what have you, like, you know, the, the, the people in charge, uh, in quotes, they just like make up the story and go, this is the way it's going to go. And this is what you have to do when you're like, this is what happened. I'm telling you the truth. And it's like, no, 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 that's not the way we got to play it. You're, you got to be like, you help bury the body. Like, what? Well, like, that's that my point. Like, happen, like, like, like Jay, all the time. It, regardless of white, black or whatever, whatever race, right? If, if, if the cop sits down to you, Derek, a black cop sits down with you and says, you know, I'm going to try you in a, in, a, in a black community. You're being a white guy, reversing the script, right? And you had nothing at all to do with it. Nothing. And yeah. says, I'm going to charge you with the murder. Go ahead, man, because you don't have any evidence. Because I had not, if you truly believe you had nothing to do with it, why on earth would you go along with this story? Robbie, do you really think like they can convict him? They would have convicted him with zero evidence? Um, 
you know, the state can create evidence. Corruption. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like the thing is, the way they created a witness against Adnan, they would have found somebody against Jay. And the thing is, this this happens all the time. Like as crazy as Adnan's story is, and it's really crazy because of the weird people. Like you know, his defense attorney was a weird person. Jay's crazy. The guy who found the body was a uh, weirdo. Like there's so many weird characters. But the truth is, false con- false uh, confessions by witnesses who actually implicate themselves. Even those happen all the time. And we think, and the other thing is this. So Jay is a guy who can't afford a lawyer. If he could have afforded a lawyer, the, or if he knew well enough to the, from the very first day the police contacted him to say, you can't ca- talk to me again. I'm going to get my lawyer on you. That would have been the end of it. Um, but he couldn't afford a lawyer. And he con- tried to contact the public defender's office a number of times. Uh, and they were not available to him because, you know, the state was playing really dirty. The public defender will not represent you unless you're charged. So the state wouldn't charge him until the day they gave him the plea deal. And that day, guess what? They didn't get him a public defender. He was never, ever able to get his own lawyer. Right. It, the prosecutor found a lawyer and said, this is going to be your lawyer. Um, uh, the prosecutor found a lawyer. <sighs> this yeah. is, happens either. This is like a classic example of like, look at O.J. Simpson trial. Mm-hmm. Power, money, mm-hmm. fame. The glove don't fit. And right. everyone knows he's guilty. He gets off. Here's right. a kid. No money, no no fame, no political uh, um, connections, none of that stuff. Goes to jail, yeah. and most people think he's innocent. Ro- Robbie, this kind of this reminds me of like um, uh, an issue I had with a friend of mine. Um, his name's Arnold, and uh, we we had to like we, this. There was a leader hose incident, and we had, uh, like Arnold actually helped me bur- bury these leader hosens in the backyard. Uh, Arnold, do you remember this story? Oh, the not the bury the leader hosen. But you don't remember the leader hosen? Nah, the, the, that was from my maid. Wait, what? I wasn't supposed to say <laughs> no, that. No, you can't admit it, Arnold. No, Robbie, the- you're talking to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Do you want to ask him his opinion on this case? He's a big fan. Um, not really. <laughs> <I'm-> <laughs> 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 well, I'm sorry, Bobby. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm super innocent until proven guilty. Arnold, I think you were proving. They, they found the hosen. The hose? And they found the kids, too. I mean, like. <laughs> oh, right. Once they found that, it was all over. The hosen where? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm commenting back on the, the, the issue of why would Jay, you know, there's a, for your listeners, if you're interested, um, there's this guy called Darren Brown, he's out of the UK, and his stuff is on YouTube, but he does these things called like these human experiments, and he does one call, uh, on false confessions, and what he does is, it's amazing to watch, because in three days, he takes a guy over the course of a weekend, and within three days, this totally sweet, innocent guy, within three days, he convinces him that he has committed a murder, and the guy literally confesses to a murder that That's crazy. First never happened, right? Didn't happen. Uh, the whole story's fake, but he confesses to it. So, you know, people do all kinds of crazy crap. But how, how, like, how is that? Like, and, and you've heard of that, like, prosecutors, you know, you, you know you're, you're in there, or the cops are in there, you're in the interrogation room for how long, you're delirious, you're tired, and you, you, the people say, you know, they'll, they'll admit to a crime that they didn't do. Like, what is this, why, what's the psyche there? Like, I don't get it. That's crazy to me. We might not be able to get it unless we're in this situation. I mean, for some people, you know, like Jim Trainum, who's the detective that was on Serial, who kind of looked at the case, he he changed the course of his career when he realized that he had totally, like, fed all the information to a witness. Um, and she basically accepted committing a crime that she had nothing to do with. They, they wore her down. They said, we're going to take away your kids. And finally she said, okay, fine, I did it, whatever. Just let me, you know, just let this be over. Um, and then she ended up in prison. But then he, when he went back to review like the interrogation tapes, he's like, "Oh my God, I." She actually admitted to stuff that didn't even happen, um, just because I kept feeding, like feeding her information and pushing her. So I mean, it, it happens. I just, I, what is the psychology? I don't know. I'm not an expert there. What assholes? You like, know, what's, it's like so. Like, what do they benefit from it? I mean, closing cases. Yeah, that, right. is that that's the goal? The closing cases. Wins and, and get, losses. People bro. clap. Oh, you have this many wins. wins. And I mean, that that's it. Yeah. And when it, the lawyers it, are done, it, they look at each other and they go, "We won." Not it, they. Not they. It's, <laughs> it's very political. It's a big deal. You have to understand. Even prosecutors, a lot of prosecutors in different counties around the country uh, are elected. So it is, and, and and a lot of times they'll use that office to move up. They'll run for mayor. They'll run for other things. I mean, the prosecutor in Adnan's case, Yurik, he's run for political office a number of times. Thank God he's always lost because he's an idiot. But <laughs> you know, but you know, so these are very political things, and they also get bonuses for it. I mean, your career record, you know, it it matters to them. So, Robbie, to to kind of uh, circle back a little bit, uh, you said, and I can't believe I brushed over it, you said you don't think Jay did it. 
So if you don't think Jay did it and you're so close to this case, who, do you have an opinion on who you think might have? I don't know who did it, but I know who needs to be looked at um, very closely. And I would say that's Don, her actual boyfriend at the time. Um, yeah, he gets so brushed over that I even forget. Don or Don? Don, Don. Who, who she worked with. This guy gets brushed over in the serial podcast. And then in Undisclosed, you really kind of like break open the whole shell about like he wasn't at work where he was supposed to be at work and people kind of like lied for him. And, and, and how come he wasn't looked at further? Um, you know, I think what happened and this, I mean, not just what I think, I think it's documented what happened is even before they found her body, they had actually started uh, zoning in on Adnan as a suspect. And so they just had like this tunnel vision and they just said, it's him. They started pulling his records. They used the DEA to pull the cell phone records. Like they were really, gonna get a non one way or the other. And so because of that, like they excluded everybody else. I mean, I'll give you an example. Forget um, Dawn, um, her uncle, who's, you know, she, when she went missing, she was supposed to pick up her cousin and um, the father of that cousin, her uncle, who I don't know if they lived together or, but they were very close. Anyhow, in her diary, she writes about how her uncle, you know, I think slapped her or something like there was some altercation. It could have been nothing, but at least it merits a police, like, you know, some kind of a, like, at least like a conversation, right? To talk to the uncle, be like, where were you, by the way, on that day? Like, you hit her once before. What happened here? Um, to explain that, at least. And that didn't happen. She had a stepfather, or or it was like an ex-boyfriend of her mother's who lived in the state. Nobody ever talked to him. The police never did. They just did a really shoddy investigation because they were after one person. Um, but when it comes to Don, you know, I, I am not at all suggesting that he uh, did anything to her. Like, there's no reason. There's nothing tying him to her, to the murder at this point, in the same way there's nothing tying Adnan to the murder. Um, but if you have to reopen the investigation, you have to start with a guy who falsified his alibi, basically. You know, he said he had, he had worked and the timesheets turned out to be fake and the police couldn't, didn't talk to him. They didn't get a hold, they couldn't get a hold of him till 1.30 that night. Um, and so it's like, okay, well, you know, just tell us where you were and maybe it's nothing. Um, but I think that's a good place to start at least. But Where's Don now? I'm not sure exactly what state he's living. He's somewhere on the East Coast. He's got a family as well. This guy, this like guy's got to be listening to this, and he's got to be, sh you know, shitting his back. I mean, I, I just feel like it's if he's innocent, he shouldn't be. And I think if he's able to explain what happened at Lens Crafters, that's where he was working. Um, that would be the end of it. It's like they just don't cross every T's and dot every I. They just like this is who we want. In yeah. our story, this yeah. is who we think right. did it, and we're going to make sure that's who gets convicted of doing it, even if they didn't, just because, like, how do you, how do you live with yourself as a lawyer or, like, a pro and, and, and knowing that you're putting away someone who's innocent just because you want the merits? That's, I mean, a, that's a good question, and are you liable? Yeah, like you know, it's gonna come back at you at some point. Where are the, these? All I know, I know uh, Gutierrez is she's passed away. Yeah, the cops. Oh, the cops are enjoying their retirement and pension, probably. I mean, like nothing has happened to them, and that's the, the big, the biggest issue. And this is one thing. Once you know, once I'm kind of wrapped up with the Don thing, meaning once he's home, um, hopefully, I, you know, because I have worked in advocacy for many years, uh, so it's not just about his case; it's about some of these bigger issues that are attached to his case and tens of thousands of other wrongful convictions, and that's accountability. I mean, right now we're in a situation where you have cops literally killing people like on camera and not getting indicted for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, there's no accountability in the system for prosecutors who willingly withhold evidence, like who deliberately, they know that this guy's innocent. They have the evidence and they sit on it and they bury it. I mean, there are so many cases like that. Those guys should go to jail and they yeah. don't, they don't lose their license. Nothing happens to them. And I will tell you right now, just today, I learned about a case in Baltimore and we're going to, talk about this publicly in a couple of weeks, but I just learned about it today, in which a Baltimore prosecutor um, was told by a witness um, in a case that this guy you're prosecuting, that is not the the killer. Like, so, I saw somebody else kill this person. That He told this to the cops and the prosecutor, and they buried it. And it just came to light now that there was a witness who saw somebody else, you know, kill whatever in this in this case, but they, and they knew it, and they still went after the defendant and they convicted him. And so that poor guy is like another innocent guy in prison. But hopefully, you know, now that this story is, I mean, it's going to be public in a couple of weeks. And, you know, I, but the prosecutor will never pay for it. That's crazy. It's, it's, so, it's so insane to me. How, and um, how did uh, how did she die again? Was she strangled or what? 
Um, Hay was, yeah, I mean, according to the autopsy report, she had been strangled. She also had been, um, there were these really, really serious contusions on the side of her head in two places. So I think she might have been hit hard in like in two parts of her head. She might have been knocked out cold before she was strangled because there aren't any signs of struggle. Um, It's hard. You know, her body wasn't found for about, I think, four to six weeks after she she disappeared. About, About a month after she disappeared is when they found her body. Jeez. (laughs) <laughs> so insane how many does ser- does the undisclosed podcast go until adnan is out or is it something that you have a end point for no it's there's no way i mean like we, you know we, we're not going to keep dragging this on and on we're going to go through the material we have i mean part of the complication is though like new things keep coming up new things we don't anticipate but we we will probably wrap up by the end of this year i mean somewhere in mid mid december so i think we'll be done with but because We'll be done with Adnan's case, but because there are so many others who have come forward and said, listen, could you look at this case? Could you look at this case? You know, we probably will be doing se- more seasons of Undisclosed on other wrongful convictions. Will you and- piggyback on, on the next serial podcast or will you? <laughs> that would be awful. That's no, we wouldn't do that. Um, no, no, because I don't think Sarah is doing another wrongful conviction. I, what I've heard is she's working on a totally different kind of story. But so, no, we would look at other wrongful convictions. And in the meantime, as Adnan's case is progressing, we would, you know, just do updates and stuff. Ha- has anyone, has there been any, anything shocking? Like people, are people coming out of the woodwork with the popularity of this? And are you getting like a lot of, I don't know, like uh, red herrings? Um, I mean, not really. People have, not coming out of the woodwork, but people have come forward. Like, for example, uh, I told you, you know, the attorney who represented this witness has come forward and said, this is what happened. You know, he was railroaded. Um, the cell phone expert um, who is, you know, with the state who now is kind of working with our legal defense came forward. We've had a number of other, th- I mean, there's a couple other things too that we haven't gone public with yet because, you know, we have to also be careful. This is an active case and we yeah. have to kind of things in a wrap. But um, we, you know, we, it's, this is kind of a crowdsourced investigation. It's really interesting. There's another podcast called the Truth and Justice Podcast, which, is you know piggybacking on on both serial and undisclosed, and this guy Bob Ruff is doing his own investigation, and he's the one who um, was able to confirm that Don's you know timesheets were fake, falsified. I mean, there's a lot of things that um, have happened because of the power of the crowd. So uh, you know, we've had people. Uh, oh, here's another one. So apparently, there was a Crime Stoppers tip that came in for this case. So somebody had called in a tip to the police, which never had been reported to us before the defense didn't know about it and this person had been paid for their tip so it means they had something to offer but nobody knows who or what right that that you kind of like allude that that was jay no well we we think it was jay just because of some timings of different things but the thing is you know we wouldn't even know that that tip happened other than, except for the fact that there was a person on reddit who was able to crazy. Do, crazy to do an investigation to con- find the right person in Crime Stoppers, who then confirmed the information for us, you know. So, yeah, the, the people who have come forward have been very helpful. Red herrings, like, you can kind of determine what's what's right and what's bunk. I mean, it, it doesn't take a lot. So yeah. has anyone has anyone uh, tried to reach out to Don? Has he, like, declined comment? Or is he someone who's, like, ready to cooperate and talk? Oh, no. I mean, the same guy, Bob Ruff, who, um, this other investigator who's working and doing the Truth and Justice podcast, he did. He contacted Don. He contacted, and so Don's mother was a, was his manager at the store, and his stepmom. Oh, also. Jesus! His family are the ones presenting these timesheets. Yeah, they were the ones who confirmed it for the for <laughs> the. <Yahtzee. laughs> and, and to falsify the timesheet, what he what he learned from other people who other managers at at Lens Crafters is that only his mother could have done it. So, you know, if if this is what happened, then basically the whole family, they, at least his mother's, because they, it was two women who were like either married or living together at the time. Um, knew about it, knew that it doesn't necessarily mean they think he did anything or he actually did, but they at least knew that he was not being honest about where he was that day. And so Bob has reached out to them and one, one of them said to him, uh, if you contact me again, I'm going to report you for harassment. Uh, the other one I think didn't respond. And then Don himself said, you have the wrong person, but it wasn't, it was absolutely the right person. He was, he had sent the message to. So they're kind of, you know, circling the wagons and I think they're just going to see if, um, if this all dies down. Could, could Don be tried if they found evidence at this point, if Adnan gets out, uh, you know, signs all those papers, says he won't go against the state. Uh, could they actually go after Don or Jay? 
Um, it's unlikely they would because, you know, for them to do that would mean that they got it wrong with Adnan. And this is like part of the whole problem is that they have to first right. admit that we got it wrong. So I think the only way they would do that is if like they were so publicly humiliated and something so obvious came forward tying somebody else to the murder then they, that they would have to charge that person. There was DNA, there were DNA samples that were taken from her body. And for some reason, the prosecutor put the words hold the test like on the, the record. And so it never got tested. So if that stuff gets tested and it turns out to be some, you know, I mean, like they find something from it. Um, maybe that would force the state, but you know, the easiest thing for the state to do is say, we're giving you a plea. We're done. This whole case is closed. Right. Cause so, if they, if they, if they essentially, if they find evidence to go after Don and Adnan can sue the state and it's, so they're they, not they, going to let that happen. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like, you know, Adnan doesn't need this. I think when Adnan gets out he will have, um, in court and, uh, and a book deal and a movie deal. He'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I was, to, I was actually yeah. going to say that, like there's definitely a movie deal in this and, uh, uh, how I I know you got to go soon, but how do you how often do you talk to Adnan? Do you talk to him pretty often? Yeah, about once a week. I mean, there are times that I'm, I'll miss his call sometimes because like the way the the phone system is routed, they have some weird routing system. So sometimes you'll get a call from like Texas or I mean, like I've gotten like international call and it's actually him, mm -hmm. but the system doesn't show that it's coming from the prison. So I'll miss it. But usually about about once a week we talk. He, yeah. he he's aware of the podcast. Has he does he get to listen? Oh, he can't. He can't listen. He's seen the transcripts. It's not the same, obviously. I mean, basically, when he gets out, maybe he'll listen to serial, or maybe he'll just be like, "I can't. I can't deal with this anymore." Uh, but he knows because, I mean, he's aware. He also gets a ton of mail. He has gotten thousands and thousands and thousands of letters, photographs. A lot of ladies are very interested in him. Um, <laughs> so he's a yeah. superstar, and he doesn't even really when he gets out. He's a superstar, and you know, yeah, he gets uh, some inappropriate pictures too once in a while. So uh, I'm not surprised. How is his like? How is he? Uh, if you had to break What's it down, spirits, yeah, like, yeah, spirits. I, they're good right now, and that's mostly because um, the appeal is moving forward, and also, you know, it's he's just happy that there is evidence coming forward showing how he was l deliberately screwed. You know, like it wasn't. It wasn't like, I think, you know, I think Dana had said it in serial. Oh, he must be the most unlucky person. No, I mean, this is what happens in all wrongful convictions. You know, people are screwed by every part of the system. So he's good. Um, he's hopeful. But, you know, we also have to temper it because there are other times we were hopeful in this case and nothing happened. But this is pretty much the best shot he will ever have. I, I really believe he's innocent. I hope he gets off. I hate the corruption in politics. It, like, drives me insane. Yeah. And to and people 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 to do this, man. I want to see like the real people go down. I mean, it's it's crazy that the, like prosecutors and all these like well, like just just for like brownie points, just for like yeah. reputation. That's that's crazy. I mean, I think it's going to require, and I really hope to encourage it at some point. Like every state has to pass some state level legislation saying that if you willfully withhold evidence, you will lose your law license. Like if we are found to do that committing a Brady violation, that's what it's called, you will lose your law license. If you are shown as a cop to do X, Y, Z, you're going to lose your job and maybe end up in prison, you know. But now nothing happens. Nothing happens to any. I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on social media where people are filming police, like we talked about. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's harder now. And I feel like, you know, if this, if this happened now, if this crime happened right now, right, they find this, this body or the Best Buy or they, like they could track everything back via camera and cellular device. Um, he'd be completely exonerated. He could then too. Look, you're talking about this was not like 1929. It's freaking 1999. And for you to for the police to say, oh, yeah, somebody made a phone call from Best Buy, but we have no records of that call. We don't we don't even have records of a payphone actually being there. It was willful. It was willful. And any decent lawyer could have just driven past the Best Buy and been like, Bitches, there is no self. There's no. <laughs> there's nothing here. There's no payphone at the damn Best Buy. It was. It's willful. So I mean, yeah. But you know, today you're right. Social media captures like it, it captures everywhere we are. But also, our phones have GPS tracking devices, so we're kind of screwed. Yeah. yeah. Just anyway. Don't. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, it's a game we like to play. It's called Top or Bottom. I'm going to read you two terms. Uh, it's based on you. If these two things, two things were in a relationship, which one would be on the top? And which one will be the bottom? We'll round table it. We'll start with you. Number one, top or bottom, cooking or kittens? <laughs> kittens. Well, you're you're a big you're a big cat lover and you love to cook. Is that what it's all about? I don't love to cook. I have, but I love cats. <laughs> How many cats do you have? I only have one right now, but I've had a lot of cats over the years. Oh, so you're not I a cat lady. You just like cats. 
I post a lot of pictures of Mr. Beans. Mr. Beans? <laughs> Get a oh. It's gorgeous. Look him up. <laughs> Derek D. Does he have his own Twitter account? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, no, no, he doesn't. But you can hashtag Mr. Beans. And he does have a Facebook page, though. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great. Uh, I go cooking on top. Kittens on the bottom. Oh. Kittens are cute. But, yeah, cooking. I would even... Kittens or cats. I put them, I put them both on. Yeah. Uh, top or bottom, number two, uh, police corruption or bad lawyering? Um, bad lawyering. Mm. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, you can't account for all... I mean, like, you're never going to account for every police officer out there, but the lawyer's job is to keep all that shit in place, and you're getting paid for it. And so, I mean, you know, you're, somebody's life is, has, somebody has put their life in your hands. To me, that's... I mean... That should fix the system if a lawyer knows how to do their job right. Mm. I agree completely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, top about <laughs> number three, serial or undisclosed? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> come on. That's not fair. That's tough, right? I think they sit next to each other holding hands. Oh. Bottom. Yeah. That's you, not in the rules. <laughs> you couldn't have one or the other. Okay. Well, then, then I'd have to put... Shoot. I can't. <laughs> like, you can't have one without the other. Because serial... We wouldn't have undisclosed that cereal, but without undisclosed, Adnan wouldn't be exonerated. But I, I, I'll, I'll go with cereal on top because that's that's what started the ball rolling. Oh, I like that. I, it makes sense. That's, that's a good way to, to round about it. I love them both. I, I, I really got. I'm addicted. Like I'm Thank completely you. addicted. Awesome. Can you do me a favor? Can you? Sure. Can you? Get, they got to be out on time though. Like when I wake up on Monday morning, I want to. I want my <laughs> undisclosed. <laughs> Come on, man. You got to knock it off. PBR is always up at 12 a.m. You know, we just, um, you guys are good then because well, we, we we aim for six o'clock on Mondays and sometimes it doesn't happen. We used to stress, now we're like, well, it'll come out when it comes out. I mean, there's always technical issues. We're, we're a bunch of amateurs. Robbie, really. a consistency is the key. And if you need some help, you just let us know. Top or bottom, number four, <laughs> J or OJ? Shoot. <laughs> OJ. OJ is mastermind evil. Um, he is, Jay, right? And when I say top for that, I mean top as in who is like the worst. definitely shady, yeah. who's definitely guilty. That's OJ. You know, I usually do top. Uh, sometimes in, on the show, I'll do top or bottom. I'll throw in like something or a bucket of shit. I should have probably did you know, <laughs> Jay or a bucket of shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Top or bottom. Last one. Number five. And then we'll let you go. Split the moon or undisclosed. Right? Is that how you want to read? My producer's nodding at me like, yeah. Okay, that's okay. Oh, definitely undisclosed. I mean, Shoot, our audience is huge. You know, I think like 15 people read my blog. So, <laughs> you, you, I mean, your your podcast is killing it though, and it's amazing. You're doing such a good job at it. Thanks so much. Uh, and I, I'm looking forward to the end of it. So, in the in the year 2050, real quick, you're uh, you're sitting back, right? This show is all about the revolution of our guests, which is which is you. Um, what does your industry look like in the year 2050? Is it change? I don't even know what my industry is anymore. I mean. You know, I don't think of myself as a podcaster, right? I'm just doing that. I, I don't know. It's a media think, outlet. Yeah, you know, okay, I'll say this. I'll, I'll, if I have to think of my industry, it would be like as advocacy. So, yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be revolutionized specifically because of social media, because of podcasting, because of people being able to take stories directly to audience without media filters. Um, and I, I do think, I also think that's causing a lot of civil unrest in a lot of parts of the world because people are able to do that. I don't know what that's going to look like. On this side of the hemisphere, though, it's pretty crazy, and it'll be an interesting ride to see it. Yeah, yeah, where it all where it's all going. Yeah. Robbie, thank you so much for coming out. on the, On the way out, is there anything you like to plug? Where can we find you? Where can the PBR Posse stalk you on social media? Oh well, you can find us on Twitter. Our handle is Undisclosed Pod. We are also on. We have a Facebook page, um, and then our website is Undisclosed Dash Podcast.com. Um, every Monday, there's a new episode. It's also up on Audio Boom. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I really had fun, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, it, was, it, was, it was interesting Ho- talking. Hopefully, uh, when this is all said and done and Adnan is a free man, we'll, uh, we'll do it again. Would love to do it. <laughs>